Hey, welcome to this video. We're gonna be talking about how you can grow your business. And that's this is for you, whether you're running a bookkeeping business or you're running a small accounting firm. All the things that we're gonna talk about are relevant to you if you are an accounting professional wanting to grow your firm. We're gonna share with you the key things for growing your firm. So my name is Mark Wickersham, the author of a number of books on effective pricing for accountants. And for this video, I have a very special guest. Uh, she is the head of marketing for the Value Pricing Academy. Her name is Emily. Uh, she's extraordinary marketing. She's helping uh, other accounting firms with their marketing. So between us, we're going to talk about how do you grow your bookkeeping business. So let's let's go over to Emily now. Hi there, Emily. How's things going? Hi. Yeah, good, good. Thanks. Awesome. So we're going to be talking in this video about how to grow your bookkeeping business or your accountancy practice. And I know you've got lots of insights from both the work you're doing internally marketing for us, but also helping other accounting firms with their marketing. And I think the first thing we should talk about is most accounting firms, they want to grow and they usually dive straight into marketing tactics. But I think there's one thing that's much more important that we should start with, the, the foundations of our marketing, and that's marketing strategy, which there's a number of aspects to it. But Emily, what do you think is, what, what, what would you recommend is the starting point with strategy? Where should everybody be starting off with? Yeah, so I think the most important thing when it comes to marketing, which a lot of people skip over, is having a, a absolutely crystal clear idea of who your ideal client is so in terms of you know every element about that person you know what what is their business industry what stage is their business in are they you know a startup or are they exiting what kind of revenue amounts are they bringing in what are their attitude are they somebody that wants to grow or do they just want to remove themselves from delegate work and have more holiday time like absolutely everything about that that client, the ideal person, you need to have um, a really crystal, crystal clear image of who that person is because everything that follows on from that in your marketing, the wording that you do, the, uh, you know, the target audiences that you build and who you reach out to and where you put yourself in front of the audiences you put yourself in front of, everything comes back to that ideal client and everything that you do is geared towards them and what their needs are and what their wants are and their aspirations because and what problems that you can solve for them all comes back to that ideal client. So that's the very first thing that you should have a really clear idea on and also how you can help them as well. So, you know, what do you offer specifically to that ideal client? Um, so that's absolutely the very first thing that you should do. I would absolutely agree on that. But actually, I think there's another step before that even. Uh, and I'm basing this on my own experience running my own accounting firm many years ago. I made many mistakes starting my accounting firm and I just wanted to grow. I just wanted to win clients at any, at any expense. So I, I was good at marketing in as much as I was good at getting clients, but I didn't think about ideal client profile. And you are absolutely right. I, it took me two and a half years before I came across that concept and that changed so much. But the other thing that I find is a big mistake. If I was to start my accounting firm again, the other thing that I did wrong was I didn't get my pricing right. I was way too cheap. And I think that, I guess you're watching this because you want to grow your accounting firm, whether you're a bookkeeper or an accountant. Yes, we want to grow our firms. But before we start growing, we need to get our pricing right. And the reason for, for, for that is if you've got the wrong pricing, if you are too cheap, then winning more clients through marketing at the wrong prices is going to make you busier and busier working crazy long hours and not making enough money. So we need to get our pricing right first uh, before we start trying to win new clients. And, and that's all part of uh, our pricing strategy. Uh, and that's a part of overall strategy and marketing strategy. So we get pricing right. And then we need to figure out, as Emily says, as you said, the ideal client. Okay, let's Let's move on to uh, something else then. Let's imagine that we are doing better with our pricing and we've got some clarity over our ideal client. We want to start growing our firm now. 
And I know that you've been working with lots of uh, accounting firms, helping them with their, with their marketing. Emily, what are you finding is the number one, the best way to grow an accounting firm? Uh, yeah, so so the best way is probably the best way that it's been for years and years, which is word of mouth, is referrals, is asking asking people to recommend people that you know. So that's the most powerful one, uh, the most powerful method of, of winning new clients. And very rarely does anybody actually do it in any kind of systematic way. So they kind of maybe here and there, they bring in one or two referrals, but um, they never religiously ask for it on a, on a routine basis. So some of the things that I'm working on with, um, particularly one of my people um, I'm working on in our High Achievers program, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with um, a multi-partner firm in the US uh, with Stanley. And he um, is working on building up his uh, testimonials on Google Review and then also building into his kind of system, an automatic system for always asking for referrals. And that might be in a follow-up email uh, or in the onboarding process, it might be in the sales meeting. He's got a, an agenda item to uh, uh, ask for referrals at that point. It may be after you've done a, a really great service for somebody um, or you've saved them a load of tax or you've done something really amazing for them. And they're like, wow, that's amazing. We've done such a great service. You ask for feedback straight away after that and say, uh, I'm so glad we've been able to help you. We'd love it if you could point other people in the direction, in our direction, so that we can help them as well. Save the, you know, these imme immense amounts of tax and things like that. So we've been working on doing that sort of stuff and putting, uh, we're, we're going to be putting those sorts of things into place. Uh, but there's all sorts of other ways of bringing in referrals as well, of, of having you know, joint ventures with other people and um, and finding all of these different areas that you can add it in your emails or in your, it's your meeting agendas um, and all of this sort of stuff. But definitely referrals is a, a really powerful way of, of not as well uh, just bringing in clients, but bringing in the right sort of clients because they're going to bring in people who are um, similar to them normally and hopefully fit that same ideal client profile the, whether that's the industry they're in or the attitude or you know any of these qualities they're likely to bring in people who are like them as well so it's uh, definitely the best way is referrals I'd say. And you make a really good point there Emily that yes referrals are that's been my experience as well every poll that I've run of accounting firms where I've asked what's the best way of growing your firm everybody says referrals it, it's well. It's always been the number one way to, to 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 grow. But you also made the point that was really powerful that you need to do this and put in place your systems in conjunction with the ideal client profile. And that's so true because again, when I think back to when I started my county firm in 1996, I got lots of referrals. But because I had no ideal ideal client profile. I wasn't specific about who I asked for referrals and what type of client I wanted. And so I got anybody. I got, my referrals were all sorts of clients. I, and the vast majority were completely inappropriate. But I'd never thought about strategy. I'd never taken a step back to think about what is the right type of client? What's the ideal client? Who should I be asking for referrals? And what sort of guidance should I give them to make sure that I'm getting the best referrals. And something else, I've got a, another question for you, Emily. I know that you you mentioned a lot of uh, ideas there because one of the things that uh, accounting firms, a, a mistake we make is that, yes, we know that referrals is the best way to grow our business, but we leave it to chance. We keep our fingers crossed and hope people are saying great things about us and that magically we'll get uh, people calling us uh, from recommendations. But if it's such a powerful form of, uh, of marketing, of growing a business, we need to take control of that, take control of the process uh, and put systems in place. So I know that's what you've been working on with firms like Stanley, for example. Uh, you've mentioned a few already, but just let, share with me what's an example of a, a really simple system that somebody could put in straight away to start to get systematic referrals? Uh, yeah, so a really, uh, a really easy one is, I mean, if you're already doing a sales meeting with that person to, to, to win them with a prospect 
to convert them into a client, then at that point, at the end of the meeting, you might have an agenda item that just says, do you know anybody else that would be interested in our services? Um, and you can ask them. And we, we'd always say as well, ask for three and then you might get one. But if you ask for none, you'll get none. Or, or ask for one, you might not get any. So if you ask for three um, at the end of the meeting, then uh, you'll, you might get one or two or even three. So that was probably the first thing is just if you're already having that meeting, then to just add that agenda item onto the end. Um, but then more com going to more complicated ones, um, when uh, you know Mark teaches about value pricing, one of the things he does is a behavior award, which is, you know, we'll give you a slightly lower price if you can refer us to two or three people, or you might put it into, you know, if you do a fixed uh, a, a contract with somebody, an engagement letter, and uh, you know, this is the terms of the service. Uh, we expect these behaviors from you, you expect this from us. One of the things you might put in there is that we expect you to refer us to three people if you feel, if you find people that are appropriate. So yeah, lots of different areas that you can put them in, but that just adding it to your sales meeting as an agenda, just as a reminder, always make sure you ask for it. It's probably an easy place to start. Awesome, great. Uh, now this video is, a, is the first in a series of six videos. We focused on this one with some of the foundation, strategy, ideal client, and the number one way to grow our firms, which is referrals. But we're gonna be over the next five videos uh, going deeper in this whole thing about marketing. And one of the things that will be a recurring theme throughout these videos are really two really critical, important things that we need to factor in with our marketing. So the first of those is, is positioning. That's so important. What we mean by positioning is the best clients out there, all the clients that we want to win, the best clients, they want the best accountant or the best bookkeeper. And so what positioning means is we want to position ourselves as the experts. We want, to, we want to make people see us as being different from other firms, different from your competitors, so that people will choose you rather than the firm down the road. So we need to position ourselves as the experts. So that's positioning. That's really important throughout all marketing. There's another thing, number two, which is really important. Uh, Emily, what's the other thing that's critically important with all marketing? Yeah, so, so the other side of it is um, how you communicate. So namely the words that you use and uh, in business, we call that copywriting, which is just, uh, or copy is any wording that refers to, uh, you know, any wording that is marketing based, it tries to get them to take an action. And that's everywhere in your business. That's on your website, in your emails. If you're speaking and you're, you're delivering a sales meeting or you're speaking at a presentation or anything, it's the words you use. Um, it's what you call things. You know, if you if you're going to do packages for your services, the names that you give them are really important as well. Um, so it's just every area of your business, what wording particularly you use, and how you communicate the value of what you do, um, and who you talk, who you're speaking to as well. Going back to the client, the words that you use will specifically target that right person for the business as well. So. Um, yeah, the, using the right words as well is really important. Awesome. That's great advice, Emily. And so I'm going to just summarize what's going to happen, what we're going to be listening, learning about in the next five videos in this, in this series. Uh, Emily, you're going to be joining me on those, on those videos, sharing some of your insights and the things that you've been learning and working with other accounting firms. Anyway, Emily, thank you for your uh, contribution so far. Let me now share what the next five videos are in the series. Plus, I have some free resources for you. So the next video we're going to look at, number two in the series, is we're going to be looking at what's called content marketing, which is so powerful. And as you will see, this really this is this is a big con contributor to positioning, and you'll also see why words are so important. That's the next video coming up. Then we're going to talk about lead generation. How do you automate the process of generating leads? And uh, Emily is a genius at this, so she's going to have a, a number of uh, really powerful insights on how to generate leads, how to capture people's email addresses. Then the next video is we're going to start to look at what marketers call copywriting. Words are so important. The words that you use, the words on your website are so important. The words on your landing pages, the words in so many different places. We're going to talk about how to create really powerful 
copy that engages people, that gets people wanting to read and wanting to take action. Then we're going to look at in video number five, we're going to talk about how do you grab attention because we've, there is so much, so many messages in the marketplace right now, it's overwhelming. How do you get your content, your emails, your social posts to be the ones that grab people's attention? So we're going to be looking at how you do that. What are the words? What are the ideas? What are the things you do to get people noticing you? And then in video number six, we're going to be talking about chat GPT, artificial intelligence is extremely pow powerful. It can make a huge difference to your firm and, the, and helping you save huge amounts of time when it comes to your marketing, growing your firm. We're going to talk about all things chat GPT on video number six. Now, if you've enjoyed this, if you've had some value from this, um, please do the usual. Please click the like button. Uh, please also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also when you subscribe, hit that bell because then you'll get notifications when we upload new content. I also have some free resources for you. You'll find the links below. We have a number of things. For example, uh, if you want to know how to price bookkeeping work, I have an ebook for you. The link will be below. If you want to know how to price cleanup work, again, we have a resource for you. The link will be below. And another link that we'll have is if you want to join me every month on some of our uh, live streams and other free training, then get on the VIP list and then we'll let you know whenever we are running webinars, live streams, uh, training. Okay, I will see you on the next video. The next video in this series is all about content marketing. We'll put the link to that below as well so you can go straight there. Uh, see you on that video. Bye for now.